like IMDb when I'm looking at it. It asked me. I'm like, that's a dangerous question. <laughs> What's a dangerous question? Uh, when I <laughs> when I looked up, I just like to you know I like to prepare. I don't really do much prep for these videos, which I think is painfully obvious to anyone who who watches. I do none. I do not. <laughs> um like i can't even like my beard is a mess um but i i like to bring up the wikipedia the not the wikipedia page the imdb page for the movie that we're going to talk about just so i've got so when i brain fart on names uh i'm okay and uh so the movie we're talking about today is aileen the new celine dion biopic that's not about that's not officially Celine Dion, but it basically is so to the point where they use her songs. <laughs> uh, and to the point where a character looks at her and says, uh, yes, Celine. And they're like, ah, oh, no, it's Aileen. <laughs> Aileen, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's like it's written by a 15 year old. Um... <laughs> okay, well, let's, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, you've got your Wikipedia or IMD but, page yeah, up there. Did... But and when I opened it up on IMDb, it comes up with a with a, a an obligatory "How do you want to rate this film?" I'm like, that's a, that's a tough question. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about it is this is a movie that feels like the the basis of their script and their research was the Wikipedia entry. It feels <laughs> like a Wikipedia version of a biopic. It is um it is let's just take some pivotal moments that we know that are out there in the public sphere. And put him into a movie. Let's yeah. not dive too deep into it. Let's just fabricate everything else. Yeah. And that's what we've got. And this movie's going to give me nightmares. <laughs> there is a component to this film that if you look up all the reviews from around the world, they all get stuck on this one point. <laughs> and that is that this almost 60-year-old woman who not only stars as Aileen, but directed and wrote the film, also plays the character at age, say, seven or eight, age and 12. 12. Yeah, there's that really creepy scene where the first <laughs> time she sings in front of an audience, they're at like a wedding. Yeah. And she's hiding kind of under the table and her hand pops up. <laughs> and it's like an adult hand. It's like, a, it's just so weird. And then the face and the... F oh, it's just like, it is like, it's a cross between like, you know, a Wayne's Brother movie, like Little Man or something like that. And like a Make deep the fake. Orphan. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's a deep fake. It's like if they did the orphan as a deep fake. Yeah. Like I keep waiting for her to start killing people. <laughs> well, God damn it. She's going to kill me in my dreams because far out, I'm, I'm watching it with my wife and I'm looking at it going, are you understanding or comprehending why this is so fucking creepy? Because I'm really wigged out right now. I don't know how you met. Like I, I, I to, admittedly, I played it. Like we received a screener of this film. We didn't see it theatrically. And I played it on the computer next to me while I was while I was working. And if I had been sitting with someone watching it, the entire the entire movie would have been me pausing it going, What? What just happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? What? I, I honestly this it's being distributed here in Australia by Rialto, uh, Rialto Pictures, I think Rialto Films. Yeah. I don't know what they were thinking. Like, it must have come in a package. I don't understand. Well, I mean, the film has performed reasonably well around the world because it's two years old. Like, we're getting it a bit later yeah. than everyone else. It went to Cannes. And look, it did, look, we are definitely not the target audience for this film. Well, like, that yeah. coffee and cake crowd at Palace Cinemas may go nuts for this. But um, before we get any further, like, because what I'm going to say to you is in typical Glenn fashion, I still enjoyed it. Like, by the time I got to the end of it, um, I just I looked at my wife and I said, like, that was just fucked up and I enjoyed the ride. Like, I really, I did. I got to the end of it and I was like, because I think the production value is pretty good. Some yeah. of these con the concert sequences are really legitimately well staged. You know, you'd believe there's a big crowd there. And yep. I think like the the production, like the locations and things, they've they've shot in real mansions. They've it, yeah, it they all had a decent looks budget. really good. 
It's yeah. just that that script is essentially and, like I said. It's it's a copy and paste. It, and, and the performances are pretty good. Like it's not that like the performances are bad. Once she gets and that's once she gets to an adult, and it is impossible to tell when that is because yeah. because of what they've done with her face from the age of twelve to the age of twenty, she looks exactly the same. Yeah, like she doesn't. She doesn't get taller. She doesn't get bigger. Not like she is the same. And then when she starts having starts having amorous feelings towards her manager, who is like forty years older than she is, or something yes. like that. Yeah. The, which is which is a famous story unto itself, you know. Which is a famous story, and uh, you know, it is. It's it becomes a bit it becomes a bit questionable to watch. But I found the first twenty minutes were almost impossible to watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff with her yeah. as a girl, even though that generally in these kind of movies that's the stuff I like. Then the rest of it. Once she's an adult, then it starts getting good. Although it it does feel like a lot of these biopics, it does feel like they are rushing through, like you said, the Wikipedia entries of her life. Like yeah. we've got to have this, we've got to have, you know, we've got to have the part where she her voice gives out on stage. And we've got to have the part where she gets pregnant. And we've got to have the part where the husband gets, you know, has a cancer scare. And we've got to get up, you know, like they it's beat by beat, like that's how they've mapped out the story. And the connecting tissue is irrelevant. But the one, the one beat, arguably one of the most important beats that they completely ignore is his death. Like it's like he's alive one second, and the very next scene they're at his funeral. Yeah. It's, what? I'm like, hang on. Yeah. Well, he's watching her on. Yeah, he's watching yeah, her from the. Do the Bugs bed. Bunny. Do the do Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> we that was a cute moment, but it's like the, they were, we're not going to show it. But speaking of like that. The relationship with Celine Dion and her manager slash husband is famous in pop culture. You know, he, for, for let's just say he groomed her, like, from a very early age. You know, he managed her from the age 12, married her when she was in her early 20s. I think yeah. they successfully, after they crossed the halfway point of the movie, removed that creep factor. Like, I actually believed it as a true love story once she was properly of age and clearly she was in it for the love. Well, that's right. I mean, it become the yeah. So whether or not that's a, tr- you know, yeah, I oh, know, no, but that's you know a, what I'm saying. A, no, I feel like they've removed that creepiness yeah, from it because everyone gets over it. But she, but it's clear, like they make it very, very clear in the film that she is the one pursuing that relationship. He is not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is not. He's already married. He's okay with that. He has, you know, seemingly no romantic feelings towards her at all. And has reservations when it and gets has that reservations way. about yeah. it. And yeah. then, you know, it's only when she starts rubbing her 20-year-old body up against him that he's like, oh, all right. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did get into the music industry for just this type of thing. So <laughs> why not do it? Uh, but look, you know, see, now we're, we're talking considerably favorably about the movie. Like, I mean, it is a strange, strange beast. Yeah, look, I think it's it's definitely one that in 10, 20 years' time, like when you talk about it to something, you're like, you will not believe it. You've got to see this movie. <laughs> it's just fucking weird. Do you know, the, and, the moments I liked the most about this one were the towards the end when she um, she's feeling like a caged animal and she goes out on the streets of Las Vegas by herself. Like, I love that stuff. But yeah. I'll tell you what, um, how bloody funny was I text you halfway through the film when I'm watching it. That scene when... He just rocks up to her door and she opens it all dressed up for him. And then like this 80s pop music just kicks in and we get this montage yeah. and it's like, what the yeah. fuck? Because he does make a reference and it is particularly kind of freaky when she's a girl. Like she's got, she's got very, uh, how can we put this? Uh, she's got English teeth at the, <laughs> at the start of the film. And then as her career is taking off, he does say, you know, she probably needs some dental work and, yeah. and you know, it's understandable why she's never had any dental work because she comes from a family of what? 14. 15 or 14 <laughs> siblings and they've all, you know, so money would have been pretty tight for this family. And she's, but she's, you know, she's definitely got some, she definitely has some teeth issues. I think they want to get her as a, a wardrobe and. Well, she was, she hair. was their ticket out of the slums, you know, and they knew it. Yeah. Yeah, um, which is true. But they portray it's everybody. The... They portray everybody as lovely, yeah, like they... the family. They're not exploiting her. They just want the best for her, even though, like, they literally all. She is the cash cow that, and they are definitely sucking at her teats. The manager <laughs> is like just wants the best for her, 
He's not really thinking about himself. Like he has tears in his eyes when he first hears her sing because she's just that good. You know, it's not like dollar signs flashing in his eyes and he's like skeezy trying to exploit her. Everybody just wants the best. Celine Dion has had a <laughs> charmed life. You know, everyone that she's ever met has just wanted the best. They've, they've been rooting for her to succeed. No tall poppies, no sleazy exploitation, just, you know, you've got a talent. And and even the manager, even her husband slash manager, when he's pushing her beyond her limits, like when she clearly needs a break, it's the way he words it is always, you know, you first you have to make people happy. You have to make people happy. Yep. That's the whole but, but that but the persuasion always ends with and then you get time to yourself. Yeah. You Which know? she never does, seemingly. Yeah. At yeah. least they don't show it. Well, I think we've uh, we've given uh, Aileen enough coverage. I'm going to actually end this video with the trailer so people can get a, a, an idea of what we're talking about. But you know the mistake I made? Uh, I, I told my wife, like, we're going to watch this Celine Dio biopic. And I had read nothing about it other than what we got with the screener. <laughs> and I said to her, it's, it's an English film. Like, it's in English. And then, like, it starts off in French. And I'm like, oh, clearly her career becomes bigger and she goes to America and it's going to be... It doesn't. It, it's all French. <laughs> what I love about it too, like if you've got a bit of time out there, jump on IMDb and read some of the user reviews. 90% of them crack the shits about the poor Quebec French accent. Like, because the, 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 the director, star, writer, uh, Valerie Le Mercier, she is French. She's not, yep. she's not French Canadian. Yeah. So they all, they're all disgusted by the Quebec like the the how she's massacred the Quebec accent, and like for us, well, the, the, well, firstly the, they're, they're the going to be angry at you for saying Quebec because it's it's Quebec, but, uh, <laughs> but she cast it's everyone else. Queue, my friends. Everybody else cast in the film was from Quebec. Yeah, just not her. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. The trailer. Céline, c'est vraiment toi qui chante là-dessus? Aline. Fallait pas commencer à m'attirer, me toucher. C'est sa première apparition dans une émission de grande écoute à la télévision. Aline, Dieu. Fallait pas t'entonner. Non seulement faut qu'elle prenne un break, mais faut qu'elle voit autre chose, qu'elle qu voit du monde, qu'elle aille danser avec des amis. On me dit qu'aujourd'hui. Cette chanson, Aline, et on peut savoir à qui elle s'adresse. Je deviendrai, c'est ça! Pas... Vous n'avez pas compris que pour ma petite princesse, c'est un prince qu'il lui faut? Pas un vieux pruneau bronzé qui a trois fois son poids, deux fois et demi son âge et qui est deux fois divorcé. Une. Eh, vous m'avez pas perdu. C'est l'amour qui a gagné, puis c'est tout. Moi aussi, je sais le faire. Mmh, mmh, mmh. Ben, tiens. I'm alive when you call on me. When I hear you breathe, I get wings to her This is it. I'm alive. Aline, c'est celle-là la bonne. Je suis sûr. Le couple vient de s'offrir une villa avec pas moins de 40 pièces. C'est jasé, maman. Non, là, moi, mon problème, c'est que je... 